Hi, I'm John Hurd, the program manager for the Paint Care program in Vermont, and today we're going to run through the training slides for a paint care drop off site. So the slides we're looking at today are actually the slides that are in the training binder. Every drop off site gets a binder that would have these same slides for reference and for retraining of new employees. Um, when you open up the paint care binder, this is the first page. And on here, we've got the contact information for the hauler. So we contract with Clean Harbors in Vermont to do most of our pickups. There are a few sites that use a different hauler, but that their information would be on the front page of your binders, if, if so. Um, so if you need new bins, need to get your bins picked up, these are the contact information for that. My number is on here as well. And we have our 800 number, which we'll talk about a little bit later. On the back side of that page, we have some Vermont specific rules and information. Talks about the fees. Fees are a little bit different state to state. We've got a storage time limit of 180 days. We've got some spill reporting information, including the envir environmental, the numbers to call, the Vermont emergency management numbers. And please let us know if there's ever a spill. So a little background on paint care. Paint care began because there is a lot of leftover paint in the United States. The estimate is about 80 million gallons are purchased every year and never used. In the past, before paint care, it would have just been household hazardous waste days to get rid of oil-based paint for the most part. Um, a few household hazardous waste facilities accepted with latex. Most people said to dry it out and throw it away. This is a waste as it is eminently recyclable, back to paint to paint recycling. So about in 2003, the American Coatings Association met with a bunch of household hazardous waste operators, and they were talking about how paint, which is the American Paint Coatings Association's products, is a huge cost and a huge and a big burden for municipalities disposing as household hazardous waste. So the Coatings Association decided rather than wait and have states um, write up paint legislation and set them, tell them how to recycle their own products, decided to write their own legislation and have a little control over the situation. So as a result, at this point, we have 10 active states and a few more that are up and coming that are running on these um, industry supported paint stewardship laws. So Paint Care was created by the Coatings Association in 2009 as a nonprofit organization to strictly to run and run these recycling programs. We're governed by a board of architectural paint manufacturers and we're, we have oversight from the state agencies in the states where we operate. So it's a three R's program. Paint Care basically encourages reducing, reducing waste by buying right, promotes reuse. So a lot of people get rid of full cans of paint that they didn't like or had a full can extra. Many sites can turn around and give those back away to people to, who need a good can of paint. And the main thing we do is provide a system for collecting and recycling paint that comes back to our drop-off sites. So paint care is funded by a fee on every gallon of paint sold in the states where we operate. And the way this works is the paint manufacturers send the money to paint care. And that most of that goes to transportation processing and outreach. A little bit goes to the state oversight agency. Um, paint manufacturers charge the paint retailer who then charges the consumer. So the consumer is ultimately paying for this and it comes back up to the paint manufacturers and then back down to paint care. Um, paint care sets up sites at household hazardous waste facilities, transfer stations, and the majority of our sites are actually at paint retailers. So hardware stores, paint stores, that kind of a thing. So what happens to the paint once it's collected? A small amount gets reused or donated. Um, the majority of the latex is returned into recycled content paint. Some small amount is turned into landscaping material, or if it's really junk, goes to cement asphalt blends or into the landfill. This is again talking mostly about latex. Oil-based paint is most mostly used as fuel in a hazardous waste incinerator. A small amount of um, oil-based paint is recycled. All right, so into the guidelines here. One of the important pages in the, in the binder is the staff training record. 
So this is showing that your staff has been trained in this universal weights training and understands how to collect paint and how to run the program. So nice little graphic of the binder itself. So as a site, you would get a binder. You get the bins, labels, and spill kit from the hauler. Uh, we've got a wide variety of store signage and other consumer outreach materials like posters and window clings and counter mats and brochures. And this is all at no cost to drop off site. It's all paid for out of that fee. A little quick do and don't about what happened about the storage of the bins. So the card, the indoor bins are basically a cardboard box with a heavy plastic liner. So it's a secondary containment in case the paint leaks, it stays inside the box. Uh, one of the most important parts is to make sure that there's an identification label. And I'm going to do a quick flip to the next slide. In Vermont, the labels look like this, and this is its universal waste labeling. Note the accumulation start date. So when the box is set up and the first can of paint goes in, that needs to have the date put on it. That box needs to be picked up within a year of that initial date. That's very important to have these have the labeling on the box. Go back. To make sure indoors and outdoors, the, we do have outdoor boxes. I'll show a picture of that in a minute. And they need to be under a covered, under a little bit of cover, so they're not completely at the mercy of the of the elements. And they need to be in a secure area and on a hard surface. The other basic things like keeping away from heat sources, maintaining some space so you can get access to them. And the most important thing is immediately putting paint containers that come in in the bin. So the, the, on the don't do this list, it's not a self-serve program. People can't come in and put their own paint in the box because that just leads to a terrible mess and all kinds of things in the box that don't belong there. Um, don't store it near ignition sources. Don't allow paint to come back out of the bins. Once it's in there, it should stay in there should be neatly stacked if possible. Bins should be secure so people can't get to them. Don't overfill them. They do need to be sealed up and closed for transport so they can't have cans sticking out of the top. No, there's never toss paint in. That's a great way to make a big mess. And any open containers can't go into the bin because again, big mess. Here's that label again. So here's some do's and don'ts on the bins themselves. This is an example of the indoor bin with a cardboard box with a plastic liner. And it's an example of the outdoor bins. So hard plastic bin with a li plastic lid, but it's under a roof in a secure area and on a hard surface. And you can see the, the labeling is right on there. So here's some bad examples with paint cans sticking out and all sideways and crooked everywhere. And outdoors, this is something never allowing the paint to sit outdoors, uncovered, not in a spill kit. This is a great way to make a big mess. So the reusable bins, they're very sturdy. The main way that we've seen them be damaged is people pushing them with a forklift. That'll push a hole right through the side of it. So please don't do that. All right, here's the real meat of the whole training. What we can take. So basically the paint care program collects architectural coatings. So that's indoor, interior and exterior oil-based and water-based paint stains and varnishes. That covers about 95% of what we take. Some of the things that includes are deck coatings and floor paints, um, all your primers, sealers, and undercoaters, all stains. So that's the little Minwax oil-based cans up to five gallon pails of um, log home sealer. So all the clear coats like shellac, lacquer, varnish, and polyurethane. Um, most of the waterproofers, um, Thompson's water seal, concrete sealers, and tile sealers, we can take all those things. Uh, metal coatings and rust preventatives. So this is like uh, Rust-Oleum type products that aren't in a spray can. There's a bunch of different brand names, but Rust-Oleum is pretty well known. And just to be different, field and lawn paints. So if there's a school or somebody who has a, an athletic field where they're painting lines with a uh, with liquid paint and they leave all that paint in the shed over the winter, we can take that extra paint. We're gonna move on to some of the things we can't take. So the big three that people like to bring in along with their acceptable paints are the 
paint thinners, mineral spirits, and other solvents, aerosol cans. Unfortunately, we can't take any aerosol cans, and auto and marine paints. Bottom line is here we we do architectural paints, so we can't take paint that was designed to go on anything that's made to move. So cars, boats, those are all vehicles versus architectural structures. Um, we can't take arts and crafts paints. We can't take caulking compounds, epoxies, glues, and adhesives. A lot of paint stores have leftover tints and so forth. We can't take those, unfortunately. Wood preservatives containing pesticides. Most of these are old products like, um, like creosotes and penta, products like that, that are basically provide, made to poison the wood versus coating and protecting the wood. Roof patch repair and other asphalt tar and bitumen based products. So we really can't take anything that's tar based. We can't take two component coatings, so no part A, part B epoxies. Can't take deck cleaners, mostly as bottles of bleach, that's not a coating. We can't take traffic and road marking paint. We can't take industrial maintenance coatings. So these are very different products than something that you would buy to put on your house. These are specialized coatings for steam fittings, for swimming pools, for propane tanks, made for pro professional application. They have very, very different labeling than a regular can. We can't take original equipment manufacturer paints. So these are often things that aren't architectural. So things like John Deere tractor touch-up paint that's branded by John Deere to touch up your tractor. Another thing we can't take is shop applied paints and finishes. So if somebody has a fence factory or a cabinet shop and they're spraying paint in their factory onto their product as part of the production process, we can't take those leftover paints. They also should not be paying the fee on those paints. So all of these products that we can't take would have to go to a local household hazardous waste facility or a vet. So who can bring in how much of what kinds of paint? Households and residential can bring in any volume of latex or oil-based paints. They're exempt from hazardous waste requirements. So that's, they can bring in any volume. Now, most of our drop-off sites have a five gallon per customer per day limit. So when I say any volume, that's up to five gallons a day. Um, businesses can bring in any volume of latex. Latex is not regulated as hazardous waste. Businesses should not bring in more than 25 or 30 gallons or so of oil-based paints per month. When they do, they need to sign the generator certification log, which is in the back of the book. And it basically is a sheet that has name, date, amount of product, signature, and so where it came from, basically. And this helps to, helps both the companies and the drop-off site keep track of who's bringing in how much paint. So again, this is the only time that you would ever have to fill out a form when somebody brings in paint. If a resident, resident brings in paint, it goes right in the box. If a business brings in latex paint, it goes right in the box. Oil-based paint, there's a, there's a short form to fill out. Oil-based paint from businesses. So people are gonna be bringing in paint cans. And this is important that it's a paint can. It's not a mayonnaise jar. It's not an old, old peanut butter container. It's gotta be a paint can because of the original container with some original labeling. And this is the site's due diligence to say that they've, they're collecting paint. There's no need to open a can, just check and see what's inside of it. If it's a paint can with a label on it, that's what we take, it goes right in the box. So a couple other things, cans should be sealed and not leaking to avoid messes. Um, empty cans, we don't, we don't really take empty cans. They can go in the trash or recycling, depending on how clean they are and what they're made out of. Cans with dried latex paint are fine. And again, there's no need for a site to ever open the container. So you've been collecting paint for a little bit and you realize your boxes are full. What happens? Well, now you time to call Clean Harbors and have them come and pick it up. They have five to seven days by contract to come and clean your bins out and swap them for empty ones. Meanwhile, you could ask customers to return after you get empty bins again or go to our site locator at paintcare.org and that looks something like this. People can put in their zip code. This happens to be in California. 
works the same in Vermont. You put in your zip code, it comes up with the closest local sites, got some coding on how much they take. Um, some places take other materials, or has like household hazardous waste programs. Some places also have reuse programs. So once, once your, your facility is up and running as a site, it would be listed here and coded properly. So we, we only take five gallons at a time from customers. There are a lot of people who have a lot of people and a lot of mostly contractors and businesses that have a lot more paint than that. So we have a system where if somebody has 200 gallons or more, we will go right to them and or we will send our hauler right to them to pick it all up at no cost to them. Um, the easiest way to get an LVP set up is to go to our website at paintcare.org. There's a big orange button that says large volume pickup. If they go through there, there's a form to fill out, an online form, submit that, it comes to me. I send that back to the hauler and they should be cleaned out within 10 days. And this is a place where the, the paint care hotline, if they have questions, they can call that or they can call me in Vermont and I'll help walk them through it. So non-paint care products, we talked about this briefly earlier, but it's basically the local household hazardous waste program or events. And if you don't know who that is, you can have them call me or have their local in Vermont, mostly um, solid waste districts. What if non-paint care products end up in your bin? So you're collecting paint and a couple things slip in there that aren't paint, say some driveway sealer or something. Um, they're not gonna come back to the store or to the site. They'll be managed by Paint Care's hauler. We use one of the reasons we use Clean Harbors is they're a, a hazardous waste hauler and processor. So they know what to do with things that end up in their facility. But if it becomes a problem, and we do expect, there's a few things that will slip in there, things that are mislabeled, cans that, that don't have what they say, say they have in them. But if it becomes a problem and there's a, a trend of non-paint care products in the bins coming from a certain location, then I'm going to have to come back and we'll have to retrain the staff and make sure we find out why that is happening. So order, contact your hauler. They bring the bins, labels, and spill kits and contact your hauler to schedule pickups. And again, that number is right on that first page inside the binder. On the day of the pickup, it's good if the hauler can figure out which bins are full and ready for pickup and that there's a clear path, um, especially right now in 2020 when we've got uh, this, when we've got other health things going on, it's good to make sure that it's clear so the hauler can come in and do their work without having to interfere with the store or the site's work and nobody has to really interact too closely. Um, the driver is going to bring a bill of lading. They'll sign a copy, sign and keep a copy, and they'll go a copy to you as a site, and you should keep that copy as well. So we are working with hazardous waste here, so we do need to be prepared in case there's a spill. Um, for paint, personal protective equipment is basically you know, clothes you don't mind getting paint on and gloves and goggles if you're getting really fancy. A uh, fire extinguisher needs to be in the lo in near the location just in case. And we provide a spill kit. It's basically a five gallon pail. It contains safety goggles, gloves, absorbent, and plastic bags to put the mess in. It's good to inspect every once in a while, make sure that that spill kit and the storage area looks, looks like it should and that the spill kit still exists. And have emergency procedures and contact information, basically 911 and the emergency spill numbers are easily accessible. So despite all your precautions, somehow there's now a puddle of paint on the ground. Basically you isolate that puddle of paint, use your protective gear to protect yourself, turn the leaking container right side up, try to um, surround and absorb the spill itself and then scoop up the absorbent and the mess back into the five gallon spill kit, put the spill kit in the box and ask for a new spill, spill kit when to get picked up next time. In terms of record keeping, um, the only three things we need in Vermont are the employee training logs, the generator certification logs, and the bills of lading. We ask for a three-year retention of all those records. And they can be kept right in the binder. That's one of the reasons we use the binders. 
So this is the last slide and a few quick questions. So the paint care bins, depending on indoor bins, are about 120 gallons. Outdoor bins are about 150 gallons of perfectly stacked one gallon cans. You should take any brands of acceptable paint, whether they're ones that are sold at your store or not, whether they're obsolete cans, it doesn't matter. If it's an acceptable material, it should be accepted. Contractors can definitely use this program. They're paying for more than half of it. Uh, they are. They do have to follow the rules and stick to the five gallon limit. If they have more, we can do the LVP. Store waste. So mist tints are acceptable in our bins. Obsolete products should go back to their manufacturer. And can we charge a fee for consumers to drop off their paint care products? No, you can't. If there's no dollar a gallon or anything like that to drop off paint. So people have paid for that paint when they bought new paint, so it's fully funded through that. And if you need more brochures, posters, signs, anything like that, contact me or call the hotline number and we'll get those for you. So again, I'm the program manager for Vermont, and this is my contact information here. Feel free to email me or call me with any thoughts, concerns, questions, or if you're interested in becoming a site after going through this quick training. Thank you for spending some time with us.